Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, welcome. My name is Dr. April Boney. I have been a nursing professor for a very long time, and today I'm starting a series called Core Concepts in med Surge Nursing. I tell my students very frequently that the best way to answer almost any question that you come across on an exam, or especially if you're preparing for NCLEX, is to truly understand what is happening inside the body. So this series will go on for the next several weeks, and we are really just going to go back to the foundations um, of what is happening inside of the body with these core concepts, so that in hopes that will refresh you or remind you as you then um, start to care for these clients with acute and chronic conditions. So the first concept that we are going to discuss today is going to be fluid and electrolyte balance. So I know from being a nursing professor for quite a long time that students really, really, really struggle with fluid and electrolyte balance. So let's take it back to the basics and see if we can remind you of some things that might help you as you care for clients with imbalances. So first of all, let's talk about why we even care about balance, fluid and electrolyte balance inside the body. So fluid and electrolyte balance is the, uh, by definition, the regulation of our body fluid volume um, and our osmolarity and the composition of our body fluids. And then of course, the regulation of electrolytes is also really important to maintaining fluid balance. And think back to A&P, electrolytes move around by the process of filtration, diffusion, osmosis, and or selective excretion. Now we do know that in order to maintain homeostasis, fluid and electrolyte balance must be normal or pretty close to normal for us to have homeostasis in the body. Okay, here are a few important things to remember. The first is that we have fluid in all kinds of compartments inside of our body. Um, the first one that we're gonna talk about is the fluid inside the cells, and this is called intercellular fluid. But then we also have fluid outside of the cells, which is called extracellular fluid. Now let's break down that extracellular fluid because there are a couple of extracellular compartments. The first is the intervascular space or the vascular space. And this uh, water inside this space is called plasma. And then we have our interstitial space, which is the space in between our cells. And that's often called third space fluid. Now we do also know that we have electrolytes um, all throughout the body that are needed for normal function. Now there are two really important electrolytes to keep in mind. The first is potassium, which is found inside of our cells. And the other is sodium, which is found in between the cells. So those are important electrolytes to remember and their placement within the body. But there are other electrolytes that we do think about um, that are really important in maintaining balance, and those are calcium and magnesium. Okay, as we go throughout this series, I am going to um, eventually discuss acid base imbalance, elimination, and nutrition, and those are closely related concepts to fluid and electrolyte imbalance. So when we have issues with elimination, or we're um, not eating a nutritious diet, or we have an acid base imbalance, then we can also struggle with fluid and electrolyte imbalances. Okay, so what are the main types or the types of fluid imbalance? So there are two. There's fluid volume deficit, which is otherwise known as dehydration, and there's fluid volume overload, which often results in edema. So fluid volume overload is where we have too much fluid in our intravascular, intervascular space, and that fluid eventually it, the body just can't handle anymore. Those veins and arteries can't handle any more fluid. And so that fluid starts to push out of the veins and arteries um, into our third spaces. So that's where we see lower extremity edema in particular, but we can also see pulmonary edema. And then some important electrolyte imbalances have in particular to do with potassium and sodium. So hypokalemia is not enough potassium in our bloodstream. Hyperkalemia is too much potassium. Hyponatremia, not enough sodium. And hypernatremia, too much sodium. Okay, so what are the risk factors? What are things that we identify in our client that tell us, hey, we should be on high alert for fluid and electrolyte imbalances? So the first is any acute illness, especially when there is vomiting or diarrhea involved. Um, through the vomiting and diarrhea, the client is losing fluid from the body and that can very quickly result in a deficit. Um, severe burns, again, can very quickly result in a deficit. 
serious injury and trauma can result again in uh, deficit in the body. Chronic kidney disease, major surgery, and poor nutritional intake will all contribute to imbalances. So let's talk about what we're gonna see in the body with some of these imbalances. So with fluid volume deficit, so we don't have enough um, water or plasma in our intravascular space. If we don't have enough plasma, our blood is gonna get really thick and we're gonna have a hard time pushing it around the body. So that therefore we have decreased perfusion to our important uh, organs or to really all parts of our body because remember blood is oxygen. So if we don't have enough blood flow to parts of the body, we therefore don't have enough oxygen getting to the important parts of our body. So that's gonna be a serious consequence of fluid volume deficit. Now our vital signs are gonna to respond to that deficit. Um, our blood pressure is going to drop again, because there's not enough pressure inside those veins and arteries because of that fluid volume deficit. And the heart is going to try to compensate by beating faster. So tachycardia will occur to try to push that little bit of volume that we do have a little bit more efficiently throughout the body to um, oxygenate uh, our important organs. Now in fluid volume excess, we're going to see the opposite. Now we have too much plasma volume in our, inter, in our intervascular space. And so that is going to increase the pressure in those veins and arteries leading to hypertension. And then again, eventually that fluid is going to push out of those veins and arteries and end up causing edema, um, whether it's pulmonary or, or, or uh, lower extremity edema or both. Now, of course, we do know that um, fluid imbalances also often are accompanied by electrolyte imbalances. So we can have deficits or excesses of electrolytes, which can be life-threatening. So for example, hypo and hyperkalemia can cause cardiac dysrhythmias, um, and those can be um, you know, life-threatening for sure. Um, we can have hyponatremia, which causes mental status changes, and we can have hypercalcemia, which can contribute to urinary tract stones. So again, depending on that electrolyte and whether it's a deficit or an excess, um, that will depend on the physiologic consequences of that imbalance. Okay, so what is our assessment going to look like? So of course, we want to be monitoring for nausea and vomiting and diarrhea. Um, the body will very quickly lose fluid and uh, right along with it electrolytes if any of those are occurring. We also want to monitor any medications the client is taking, um, and we want to include any over-the-counters uh, and herbal supplements that could be interfering with our current medications and contributing to this um, electrolyte or fluid uh, deficit or excess. Now, we also want to monitor vital signs. We've already talked about what we see in vital signs with deficit versus um, excess, and we really closely want to monitor our INO and our weight. So INO, of course, um, will pretty easily tell us if we're taking in more than we're putting out or if we're putting out more than we're taking in, which will give us some idea that the body is experiencing a deficit or an excess in fluid. However, weight is our best indicator of fluid volume change. So I want you to think really quickly, what were you taught about how much weight in kilograms contributes or equals how many milliliters of fluid volume. And this is important. So when we weigh our patients daily, we want to weigh them at the same time of the day and the same types of clothing using the same scale. And if your client, let's say, gains or loses one kilogram of weight, that is the equivalent of a gain or loss of 1,000 milliliters of fluid. So if you have a client that is experiencing um, fluid volume deficit, and they gain one kilogram, then your therapy is working because they've gained a thousand milliliters of volume, fluid volume. If your client is in fluid volume overload and they gain that same one kilogram of body weight, they're actually not doing well. They're not responding to, to uh, treatment because the fluid volume excess is getting worse. So one kilogram of body weight is the equivalent of a thousand milliliters of fluid in the body. Now, we also want to monitor skin and mucous membranes and then our lab values. So for lab values, we can certainly monitor blood electrolyte levels. We can also check our blood osmolarity and then um, that BUN. So normal BUN is somewhere between 10 and 20. And we do know that as that BUN elevates, it is indicative of fluid volume deficit or dehydration in the body. So let's move on to health promotion. So how do we prevent 
uh, fluid and electrolyte imbalances. There are really two primary prevention strategies. And the first is going to be to drink adequate amounts of fluid. Um, and the second is going to be to eat a well-balanced diet. So those will um, definitely help prevent um, some of these problems. Now let's talk about intervention because most of the time as nurses, clients are coming to us with one of these problems and we need to intervene, right? So if, for fluid volume deficit, of course, our primary intervention is going to be fluid replacement. So that might be IV, that might be oral, or it could be a combination of the two, um, but we do need to replace that volume that has um, been depleted. For fluid volume overload, we're going to do exactly the opposite, and we want to restrict the amount of fluid that's being put into the body. We already have an overload. We don't want to contribute to that problem. We also might want to put the patient on a diuretic therapy or administer diuretics, which will help lose fluid or excrete fluid from the body. And then, of course, remember, if your client does have that lower extremity edema to elevate the legs to promote venous return. And then, of course, if you have pulmonary edema, we want to sit that client up in high fowlers. They might need oxygen. And then again, that diuretic therapy will help to eliminate that fluid from the body. With an electrolyte deficit, we're going to need to replace that electrolyte. That might be a PO replacement, an IV replacement, um, or it could just be replacement through the diet. With electrolyte excess, um, using fluids and medications will help to eliminate those uh, excesses and electrolytes from the body. So for example, we know that when a client has um, a fluid volume overload, when we put them on a diuretic, not only do we lose fluid from the body, but we also lose certain electrolytes from the body. So um, electrolyte excess can be treated with fluids and medications. Okay, guys, that's all I have for fluid and electrolyte balance. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave a comment below or to contact me via my email or my Twitter account. And also stay tuned for upcoming videos in the core concept series. And then one last thing, if you are interested in more study uh, material for fluid and electrolyte balance, check out the description box below. I do have an Etsy site and on that Etsy site, you will find a case study on fluid and electrolyte balance that goes right along with this video, um, which you are welcome to take a look at on that Etsy site. Um, again, my name is Dr. April Boney. Thank you for joining me today. And if you would like to learn a little bit more about me, check out the About Me section on my YouTube site. Have a wonderful day.